This time on the show, funny Wi-Fi names, MDK3, and non-violent protesting with an Occu pineapple. Plus, what's the deal with the MK802? Hmm, I'll be reviewing this little Android PC, all that and more, this time on Hack 5. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoToAssist. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. And I'm Shannon Morse. It's your weekly dose of Technolust. I am so excited. Why are you excited? Because we have all these really cool gadgets and I've got, been playing with all sorts of different things like the Nexus 7 last week and uh -huh. the MK802 this week. So I'm just like all about, you know, hacking things right now. And it's really fun. Hmm. I'm totally enjoying it and I'm so glad I've been able to play with these. You should. You should. How about this? <laughs> you hack all the things. And I'll drink You'll all drink the things. And I'll drink all the You'll things. You'll drink all the non-alcoholic yeah. things. Well, I was actually, I need to tweet this at Dualcore because I had a problem the other uh, the other night when I was trying to, I was listening to the new album, All the Things, as you all should. Yes. And, um, and I was like, yes, drink all the booze, hack all the things. So I did step one. And then when I got to step two, I was oh. all like, how do I pseudo what now? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. That's sad. I kind of have, okay, I want to throw this out there just to see if anybody creative has like an idea of how to do this with like a shell script or something. I would love if there was like a daemon that would watch your keyboard and know how many times or what the percentage of the backspace key is that you're using. So when you're in the terminal and like 50% of the things you're typing is backspace, I want it to limit sudo. I want it so that if you're like sudo dd if equals this volume, of equals, oops, my, oh. you know, master volume, it to see like, dude, no, 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 no. Like you've hit backspace way too many times, no more sudo for you. Yeah, why isn't there something like that? I mean, there's an app for that on my iPhone, mm -hmm. so there's there should be something for Linux so you don't. There's an app it. for that? What for like for yeah, drunk it's like texting? If, if you can't do math, it won't let you call somebody. Oh, there's a Google. <laughs> so there's you can't a do like drunk texting. Yeah. There's, a, there's a Google Labs feature for that for emailing. Yes, I it's love the that. same thing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that would be fun. Um, but emails feedback at hack5.org. If you have any ideas on that, and I'd love to do it. Speaking of emails, we actually got a really funny one from this guy named Nate. Yes. He said, so I was Googling SSID names and he came across this really funny article called Funny Wi-Fi Names. Yeah, it's actually at the Huffington Post and if you check this out, they've got some of the funnier SSIDs, this one, you know, uh -huh. Caitlin, stop <laughs> using our internet. Internet costs money. There's a whole bunch of really stupid <laughs> ones in here, you know, we can hear you having sex, your dog oh. on my yard, things of that nature and it's like, I, I kind of love the idea so <laughs> of, of SSIDs being used um, for that kind of social commentary. Yeah. In fact, send little messages. What was interesting about that first one was it actually lists uh, one pineapple under the, <laughs> the, you know, as one of the uh, oh, SSIDs in nice. the area. Now, the pineapple by default ships with a. Um, with an SSID of pineapple and then the last two octets of the MAC address so they're mm. uniquely identified. Yeah. We did that because we were going to DEF CON and we were like, you know, we really should update the firmware so that they don't all say pineapple or else there's going to be a whole lot It'll of fun It'll be like happening. a slew of pineapples. Well, it wouldn't though. It would just be the same ID and they would all oh, overwrite each because, other. Okay, yeah. Because when we'll talk about this, there's a difference between the BSSID and what I like to call the ESSID or AKA the SSID. Oh. Um, so we should probably get into that. Oh, and I should also mention, if you ever come to a, a hacker conference, you know, DerbyCon, TorCon, uh, ShmooCon, or DefCon, wherever we're like bringing the hack shop and have a lot of fun with pineapples, um, the first thing you want to do is change the, <laughs> the default password of your pineapple. Yeah, or else your pineapple will get owned, won't it? Yeah, that happened Aww. once. That was really sad when somebody comes to the booth and they're like, hey, my pineapple got owned. And you're all like, <laughs> root passwords, people. Anyway, it affects hackers too. I love it. Uh, so I, I had mentioned the BSSID. Well, where did all these come from? You guys know that I love the WIFIs. Uh, BSS, you may have heard, uh, stands for the basic service set. And what that basically is, is that's the access point mm -hmm. and all of the stations, AKA the associated clients connected all to All the different it. computers, laptops, whatever. Right. And we talk about BSSID a lot when we're doing like DAUTH attacks where we need yeah. to know that sometimes we call it the MAC address of the wireless network. And that's basically what it is most of the time. Um, a BSSID stands for basic service set identifier. And that's something that uniquely identifies the BSS. 
And in a typical AP and station scenario, the BSS ID is just the MAC address of the access point. So where do we get ESS from? That's the extended service set identifier. And that encompasses all of the access points and clients. Not, and so oh. you may have a network with multiple access points, mm -hmm. and multiple clients. Maybe you're using WDS or Batman or different routing protocols to make like a big mesh network in a campus. And so that would be your extended service set. Okay. So that's what leads us to the extended service set identifier, or sometimes just called the SSID, the service set identifier, which is like a call sign for your network. And it's what we all know and love as the thing that we name our thing or change it from the default Linksys or Netgear to something funny, right? And that's what we're talking about today. Okay. It's 32 <laughs> characters by default, as well as the max for the specification. But uh, using a tool like MDK3, mm -hmm. we can actually spoof beacon frames. These are the the, the bacon the, frames. The bacon frames. Yes. Not the bacon frames, although I want some bacon frames now. Sorry. Uh, the beacon frames, the frames that get you know broadcasted from your typical access point to say, hey, I'm a uh, I'm an access point. This is my name, and just kind of broadcast to like say, hey, let's all have fun, uh, or you know. Your phone sends out a per request mm -hmm. to the BSS ID of one 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 to say, hey, are there any so and so's around? That's your broadcast BSS ID. It's like a MAC okay. address, and it will, um, you know, and if there's a nearby one, it'll respond, of course, with a per request saying, hey, it's me. And we all know how the pineapple works and all that yeah. fun. Well, I've been having fun with the uh, the new, latest version of the pineapple. 2.7 just came out. We'll be talking ah, a lot yes. more about it later. I saw the release on the forum. Yeah, it, it introduces a whole lot of new awesome stuff, in, including a uh, you know a new OPKG source and Pine numbers, which we'll get into later, and some you know various bug fixes and fun stuff like that. What I wanted to bring up was how uh, using Bartender, which is an application for the uh, Wi-Fi Pineapple, uh, if you go to and, and again, you don't need a pineapple to do this. You could do basically the same thing with any laptop, but you know it's always fun to do it and then hide it somewhere mm -hmm. um, and then come back and find it. With your things. battery pack and yeah. in a park somewhere. There you go. Yeah. Uh, or magnetically connected under one of the seats in front of you on a uh, Bay Area rapid <laughs> transit vehicle. Uh, you know, if oh. you are legally required to do such things, right. not if you're not. Um, so Bartender is actually one of the apps. If I go here under Pineapple, Pineapple Bar, Bar, and that's where you get Bartender from. So it's, Pineapple Bar is basically a place where you can um, you know, download a bunch of different modules, oh, nice. infusions for your <laughs> pineapple cocktail. That's it's, awesome. We have a lot of fun with it. And so Bartender is a application written from Sebastian that mm -hmm. makes it easy to write modules for the pineapple. And so I've got Darren's first module here. And this is what I like to call the Occu Pineapple. It's currently disabled, and basically what this is is a front end for MDK3. We've talked okay. about this app before. It stands for Murder Death Kill 3. And what this allows us to do, uh, among other cool, fun Wi-Fi hijinks like deauthentication attacks, it allows us to do spam to spam those beacon frames. Oh. Those beacon frames basically okay. say, "Hey, I'm an access point. Here's my SSID name." Here's my BSSID MAC address. Here's the channel that I'm on. Here are the modes that I support, 802.11b, right. B, G, mm -hmm. and whatever. Yeah. Um, and this tool allows us to spoof those. Okay. So by default, it comes with this, uh, this configuration here where it, um, it uses the BSSID. You'll see that's the first bit there, C0FE, C0FE, C0FE. Um, oh, is this what you were showing off at DerbyCon? This is one of the things, yeah. Ah, okay. And so this is the BSSID, aka the MAC address of the pineapple. In this case, I'm not actually using its real MAC address. I'm just using this one coffee, 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 because <laughs> I'm <laughs> wanting some caffeine. It's um, understandable. A space, and then what the SSID would be. Okay. And all of these are under 32 characters, so mm -hmm. they're going to show up fine on any device. Uh, the frame actually has a limit of 255 characters, so you could you could actually make a, B, uh, a SSID, mm -hmm. like a really long one. The only problem is, it's at least in my experience, it won't show up in Android or iPhone. Um, at all, or just the at, at first all. few? Yeah, it doesn't oh, even really? truncate it, which is kind of weird. You'd think that maybe you could actually use that to hide your SSID, but then mm -hmm. again, that's never security anyway. Um, and then your clients wouldn't be able to connect, so what's the fun in that? <laughs> So I've got just the default ones here. We demand, you know, coconuts and all this 
these fun things, but we actually, we can generate a default SSID list. And basically what I've done is, in this case, we're actually not using coffee, coffee, coffee. We're, <laughs> this is the actual MAC address of the pineapple, and then I just threw in some Gandhi quotes for good measure. Of course. But what's nice about this is, you know, I can actually choose the speed, how fast I want to um, do those, and what channel I want to broadcast to these. You know, I'm already using Mon0, which is the monitor mode interface on the pineapple. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is enable it. What's fun about this is now, here we go, pull up my phone. So anybody nearby, there we go. First, they ignore you. So anybody that uh, has a device nearby, they're going to see, then they laugh at you. <laughs> or actually, then they fight you, then they laugh at you, then you win. <laughs> And so as you can imagine, this kind of enables you to do, well, not only some fun nonviolent protesting, but if you, you're familiar with the way the pineapple works with the probe requests and responses, mm -hmm. you'd actually use this to make it a lot more of an active attack by putting in, like, say, the top 100 most common um, SSID oh, names from yeah. networks. Free yeah. AT&T, Wi-Fi. AT&T, Wi-Fi, GoGo, InFlight, HHonors, uh, yeah. Linksys, Netgear, TrendNet, D-Link. Oh, yeah. yeah, all those. <laughs> Yeah, which, that's which is awesome. Fun. Yeah, I thought that was kind of a fun and thing. And it's easy to use too. Cool. And and I love that it's like it's you know if you give it the MAC address, coffee, 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 yeah. nobody will be able to actually connect because they're like mm -hmm. looking for it and it's like well it's not there, right? But if you actually use the uh, the actual BSSID of, of the your pineapple. pineapple, like I have in this case where that's actually the MAC address right there, um, anybody looking for any of these, mm -hmm. anybody that sees these and wants to actually connect will associate with the pineapple if karma's turned on. That's awesome. And in that case, you could actually use it to put up a splash screen uh -huh. with your message, whatever it may be, like, you know, we demand mangoes, <laughs> or whatever, you know. Um, and I just thought, hey, it's, and I couldn't, I, to be honest, I can't pass up a good opportunity cool. for a pun. And so that's the Occupine apple. So did you create this yourself? Or did you know, I mean, well, MDK3 was not created by me. And this is basically just a beautiful front end for MDK3. Oh, okay. And you can do the same thing on your computer here. I'll show you the, uh, the script. If I increase the size here in cat um, mdk3.sh, you'll see what it's doing is issuing MDK3 on mm -hmm. Mon0, B for broadcast, and then tack V for verbose, and then just says, hey, here's my SSID.list. Tack G tells it to be an 802.11G network. Okay. Tack S. 20 uh, says 20 Speed? times per second, okay. and TAC C11 says on channel 11. Ah. And so if you do MDK3, you're going to get all of the options here for MDK3. And okay. you'll see Beacon Flood is one of the first ones. So MDK3, TAC TAC help, B. So same thing you're doing on your there pineapple, you just a not so easy GUI. Basically. OK, that's yeah. cool. I like I, it. I don't know. I just I want to know what other people think about that, like as far as kind of getting your message out there. We It was funny, last night at dinner, we were talking about um, changing our SSIDs to like communicate through them. Oh, really? I know, just like, <laughs> you know, just really bizarre and totally inefficient networks yeah. and how you could do them with those. <laughs> totally inefficient, but they're fun. Yes. <laughs> cool. Well, next up, I have some amazingly fun stuff to do with this MK803. Ooh, you want to check that out? MDK3 AMK802 D plus 3. 5 okay. Android 4.0. We'll be back here in just a bit. <laughs> you guys know with technology constantly evolving and more and more people working remotely in different offices and on the go, it can be a total nightmare keeping everyone happy and all the systems running smoothly. And that's why I recommend GoToAssist by Citrix. It allows you to take control of your entire IT world with one simple cloud-based platform. GoToAssist makes it easy to provide live support to any PC, Mac, or mobile devices and connect to unattended computers from anywhere, even from your iPad or, get this, Android devices with their free GoToAssist remote support app. Plus, GoToAssist monitoring can you know, give you an inventory of all of your servers and networks, allowing you to fix those little problems, you know the ones I'm talking about, before they become a huge nightmare. GoToAssist sets up in just minutes and it can really make your IT life that much easier. Uh, I, I would have loved to have had 
this kind of monitoring and stuff to like email me or text me and be like, yo dude, um, you're out of space on drive C on the NT server that they won't give you the budget to fix. Well, this one you're going to love because you can sign up today, special 30 day free trial. Visit gotoassist.com and try it free. Click the promo, uh, use the promo code HAK5. That's gotoassist.com and use the promo code HAK5.